Welcome to our Workflow Wednesday for August. We're glad to have you here, and we're excited about the new topics in Flexi 21. So we're going to be talking about the uh, jig templates inside of Flexi 21 today. Uh, this is our Workflow Wednesday, which we do once a month, uh, first Wednesday of every month. And so if you're kind of wanting to know what the schedule is, that's what we do. Uh, so if you want to get notified uh, of these new videos, uh, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be posting all kinds of stuff like webinars, uh, these Workflow Wednesdays, and other new videos to show how to use the Flexi 21 software. So if that's something you're interested, I would highly uh, get subscribed. Uh, then that way you can kind of see that stuff. We also post uh, some of the stuff on social media as well. So Facebook and uh, uh, Instagram and other accounts. So check us out there uh, in case you uh, have those social medias as well. All right, so uh, last thing, if you have any questions, uh, we will be in the chat for about an hour after the presentation. So if you have any questions about Jig Template specifically, or even just about General Flexi 21, we'll be here to answer those questions. Post those in the chat or in the, uh, the comment section, and we'll do our best to answer all those questions for you guys. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look at our Jig Templates. So let's share our screen and jump right in here. All right, so here we've got our uh, production manager here, production manager 21. So the production manager is where the options for the jig templates are gonna be located. Um, let's pull in a job. So let's go to our Muto here and let's just add a job. I'm gonna just pick one of these JPEGs that I have ready here and click okay. And so what we'll wanna do is to get to the jig templates, we'll go to the job properties and you're just gonna to go to the first tab, which is the default, uh, the media layout tab. And then down here at the bottom, you're going to see several options. Uh, define layout is where you're gonna to click to define the layout of the jig. And then once you want to apply that to the file, you'll click on this apply jig layout. So you can click here, and of course you can see how it's already set up the defaults. Uh, so we'll kind of look at those here in a second. So I'm gonna hit define jig layout, and we'll just go over these settings real quick and just kind of see, see how they are. And uh, we'll go over these real quick uh, so that you have an idea of what each one of them does and how they interact with each other. Okay, so uh, here at the top, we've got our media size. So this is gonna be the size of media that you're gonna be using, uh, whether it be you know, a piece of plastic or whether it's gonna be a jig that you've already set up, say for like phone cases that you're plopping into place um, uh, so that the printer can print on the back of them or whether you're doing vinyl, uh, whatever you're printing on, this is just gonna be your media size. So this is gonna be pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm gonna set this up for 64 by 64. And it's gonna automatically adjust for me. So now you kind of see it's a little bit crazy, but it's set a ton of these. It's automatically adjusted based on my other settings. Now you can see here that my job size is pretty small, hence it's gonna fit a ton of them in here. The image that I'm using here is actually 13 by 13 inches. So that's what I'm gonna set for my jig size for now. So 13 by 13, this will make things a little bit more manageable. So now we can fit 16 of these. Now, by default, this automatically adjusts this preview for you so that any change you make will visually show up here uh, so that it's accurate. Of course, you've got margins up here. We didn't talk about those really, but these are kind of your standard, just like you have margins for your regular material. You can set margins in here. So if I do a margin of 1.4, you can see that from the left-hand side of the material, I now have a margin, and that's indicated by this blue dotted line here. So you can kind of see that. So this is gonna be my jig size here, so 13 by 13. And then I also have a margin setting here if I want to as well. So if I want that to be zero, I can set that to zero, and it'll print right to the edge. Or if I want the image to be kind of constrained inside of a smaller area inside of that jig, then that would be something I can do as well. 
So for example, I could set these to 1.4 and let's just kind of do them all so that we can kind of see what it looks like. So you can see there now the image is going to print inside of this red dotted line. So that's gonna be your margin inside of the jig. I'm gonna skip over these two settings for now. We'll take a look at those in a minute. But the last thing here, uh, or last several things here is our spacing and our origin settings. So spacing is pretty obvious. This is just how far apart each object is from each other. So for example, I could set them four inches apart and that's gonna automatically adjust the spacing. So this is vert uh, vertical and uh, horizontal spacing. Uh, so we've got our spacing here. Again, these are all settings that you're gonna be able to, to adjust so that it will match the jig that you want to produce or that you're printing on. And again, whether that's you're printing maybe some on a deck of cards, or uh, whether you're cutting uh, you know, phone cases or you're printing on the back of something like phone cases or, or some other kind of plastic or material or whatever that is, uh, this, these settings will allow you to kind of adjust that. Finally, we have our origin settings. These again are, um, and let's, let's change this up a little bit. There we go. Uh, this little bit at six by six that kind of gives us a, a smaller section here. And I'm gonna set my origin. So if I click this origin setting, it automatically puts it to the bottom right. Uh, by default, it always centers it. So if I click this option, now it allows me to adjust where I want that origin to be from here. And so this allows me to pinpoint, so maybe you have a piece of material and you know exactly how far that first copy is from the edge. Well, this is a great way to set that. So, you know, if we're, say six inches from the edge and three inches up, super easy. That allows me to customize or position these in such a way so that it matches whatever jig you're trying to reproduce inside the software here. So again, the origin setting uh, by default, if you uncheck it, it just always centers itself. And then the alignment, the last thing here is just gonna be how the image is aligned to the jig itself. So bottom right, bottom left, top right, top left, middle, edge. You can do any one of these options here. Uh, so by default, it's set to the center, uh, but uh, this might also have an effect on whether you decide to fit proportionally or not and how it scales those images up from what position and whatnot. So that's another thing that you might consider when adding your images and how you want them to be centered. Uh, and things like that. So the last one is gonna be fit jobs to jig, uh, which will force it to fit into its area. And then you can choose to fit proportionally or not. So fit proportionally will, uh, will be great to fit an object that's pretty close that needs just to be adjusted just a little bit to, to, to adjust it. Or if the object is, let's say that your uh, your print is, um, so in this case, we have a, an object that's 13 by 13. It's perfectly square. So if even if I change my jig to say 16 by 16, it doesn't really matter. When I click OK and apply, it's going to automatically adjust and, and expand that proportionally into it. Now, where the fit proportional sometimes doesn't always work out is if you have some size that's not even with each other. So maybe 16 by, uh, let's say it's 13 by 16, right? Uh, and we click okay. So now here you can see in this example is that when it tries to fit it proportionally, it fits it as long as it fits or it stretches it until it fits the edge, and, and again, it does it proportionally. So because it ran into the edge here of the margin, it says I can no longer go any further this way. And so I can't go any farther up either without stretching it. Now you can choose to uncheck the fit proportionally. And so if I do that, it'll fit the job to the jig perfectly, but stretch it a little bit. So in this case, maybe that's something that you're willing to work with. If, you're, if your image is just slightly off, 
and you just need it to stretch just a little bit, no big deal. You probably won't see it. But if you're stretching a big amount, you, you may consider uh, not choosing that option because it might stretch it overly and, and create some weird graphics like distorted graphics. Um, typically the recommendation would be, uh, depending on the jig that you're doing, uh, it might be helpful to groom your images just a little bit uh, to make sure they're kind of either the same size or they're the same um, proportion, at least in terms of what the jig is going to look like. So in this particular case, I took all these images, I downloaded the EPS files, and they were all kind of different sizes. Some of them were, you know, a little bit bigger, some were smaller. I had some 10 by 10s, I had some, you know, 5 by 5s, and I actually had one that was a, um, uh, a 12 by 15. So I stretched it out uh, proportionally and then cut out an area and then made it fit into my 13 by 13. So you might need to groom some of those images a little bit to make it consistent, uh, depending on what you're doing. Now, again, you might be able to do some things and, and here we'll show you a, a something here in a minute, kind of towards the end that allows you to kind of work around that if, if needed. So um, that works as well. So let's go back in here and let's just see what happens if we uncheck the fit jobs to jigs. If we uncheck the fit jobs to jigs, what it basically does is it scales the, the image up as much as it needs to, to fit the jig, but it allows overprinting. So basically here in this case, um, it's allowing it to print past the, past the margins a little bit until it reaches the edges of the jig. And so that's, that's another option that you have available to you. So we'll take, again, we'll take another a detailed look at this example a little bit later when we do some multiple files here. Let's go back to our jig layout though. And let's just say fit to jobs. And let's go back to my 13 by 13. And uh, before we hit OK, you can also print this jig layout out, uh, the, print, the jig layout out on your printer. So this allows you to compare notes between your existing jig and the jig that Flex is producing. So if you want to verify to make sure that everything is going to line up properly before you print it or you, before you start printing on a bunch of material, you can go ahead and print this jig layout out, compare it, make sure that it's looking correctly. Or you can actually even use this Azure template to lay pieces out. So kind of depends on what you're doing there, but it kind of serves two functions. You can print this out for whatever one of those functions that you're, you're using. Hit OK. And in this case, we have just one image. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make additional copies. And you can see it'll just fill these out. If I go past my nine, it's going to create an additional page. As you can kind of see here that now I've gone to page one and page two. Now, if you have a roll of material like vinyl or something like that that you're printing on, uh, you may not need to, to worry about stopping the machine. But if you do need to stop, say if, you're, if you have, if we use the example of phone cases and you need to take a bunch of phone cases off and then put a bunch of new ones on, then you would go ahead and choose the pause between pages. This will give you a pausing period where this machine will stop. You can reload the jig on your machine and then continue. Um, this is helpful in several different ways. Perhaps maybe it's not just a jig. Maybe it's just a sheet of material that you're printing on. You need to take that sheet off and put a new sheet on. This allows you to do that so that you have that flexibility of stopping, reloading the material, and then putting some new stuff back on. So pausing between pages if you need to. Okay, so let's take a look at an example where we use multiple files. Let's go ahead and cancel this and delete the job. And let's bring in multiple files. So I've got a bunch of JPEGs here. We're just going to import all of them at once. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually nest all of these. So I'm going to highlight all these, holding down Shift to grab all of them, or I can drag Select. I'm going to hit Nest up here. And I'm going to double click on my nested job. Now, by default, all these come in nested, nice and neat. If I go over to my defined jig layout, of course, I didn't save it. So um, it's going to go back to its default. So 
let's put in 64 by 64 and then do 13 by 13. And then we had 0.5 by five. And I kind of like that. So that looks good. Um, yeah, and we'll hit okay. I'm gonna apply my jig layout. And now you can see it automatically applies these images uh, all together. So if I decide to do copies, it automatically duplicates each one for me and fills out my graph, which is really great. So this makes copies really easy, but it goes even a step further. So let's just say, well, maybe I don't wanna print that many of each. Maybe I only wanna print one of each, but I really like the bananas. Uh, and those are maybe those are selling hot and you need extra of the bananas, but you don't need extras of any, anything else. I can then click on each one of these images and assign a number to them individually. So I clicked on this one, it kind of highlights red. It's a little bit hard to see when you're zoomed out, but I clicked on this one, it highlighted red. And now I can individually edit the copies of that one. So now I've got one of each plus a bunch of extra of the bananas. So, and I can keep doing this as much as I want. So I can select uh, maybe this one over here and say, well, maybe I want a couple extra of those. So we'll do three, or we'll do four. So now on our next page, we've got four. And I can do this and I can customize each one of these individually as to how many I want and, and how many I want to print of each. So really, really customizable and really flexible in that kind of way. So that's a really nice way of, of being able to customize how many you need. So let's go back and uh, let's reset everything here. Um, let's go back into our define jig layout. And what I wanna do is I wanna just show you uh, one of the options that we talked about earlier. And this is, I just named it phone jig layout because it kind of looked like a phone to me. Um, but what this will illustrate is it gives us um, an image where our margin, our jig size is 13 by 13, but our, our margins are set kind of like the shape of a phone, I suppose, about three, uh, three inches by, I guess I didn't set that up quite right, but that's okay. I, either way, uh, that margins are, uh, yeah, no, the margins are set correctly because uh, I want half an inch of space on each side, uh, which equals out to about, I think it's three and a half inches uh, wide to about six inches tall. Anyway, uh, my spacing is set uh, and I hit okay. Um, and so now what we can see uh, with this image and let's, let's take this and let's reduce this down to one. Uh, one of each here. There we go. So we can kind of see it a little easier. So what this is essentially doing is it's doing an overprint. So it's it's maintaining the boundary of the jig, and then it's kind of cutting it out or or printing the image here. So you're going to get some overprint there. But if you were going to be cutting these out or something like that, it would have a kind of a real natural flow to it. Uh, where the image kind of gets cut out of a previous uh, background, or in this case, this is a this is a this is an image that is you know different in size than than the actual jig or the area that I need to print. So instead of modifying the image, you know, instead of going in and modifying eight JPEGs uh, to fit this exact size. I can just put them on screen and they just have them come out how they come out. So if it doesn't really matter, like in this particular case, these are, these are kind of patterns. Um, so if we look at this one down here, this one is kind of more of a, a prevalent one here. It doesn't really matter what area it, this, this is in. I just want this kind of in there. It's a repeatable pattern. And as long as I have something similar or something on there uh, I can fit, then I can adjust that. And of course, if I want to change my centering of the images, I can do that as well. Uh, so that will you know, make a little bit of a difference. But this kind of gives you an idea of you can overprint and then either cut it out or you know, have that image where it's a little bit larger than your, your actual uh, template itself so that you don't have to worry about it being exactly the same size if you don't want to go through the effort of adjusting all those. So that's kind of a quick uh, example of that uh, in terms of setting those up. 
So we really think this is a powerful tool for people who are going to be doing flatbed type stuff or uh, jig type template stuff. Uh, this will be really helpful. And again, uh, this function can also tie into our variable data. So if you've ever used, uh, or if you watch our, our Workflow Wednesday on variable data, you can actually use these jigs along with variable data in conjunction with each other and actually create kind of like a big powerful tool if variable data and using a jig template is something that you need to do. So very flexible, uh, very useful, and we think that you guys will take advantage of this pretty well. So go ahead and check this out in the production manager, uh, and hopefully this will help you out in some of your next jobs. Again, I want to thank you guys for joining us today. I'll be in the comments for the next hour. If you want to ask any questions about this or anything Flexi 20 run related, go ahead and throw those in the comments or uh, in the chat. Again, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.